to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I will introduce our guests here just shortly. But since we always get new people listening to Alzheimer Speaks Radio, I like to tell people a little bit about who we are and, and why we do what we do. Bottom line, I'm Lori LeBay, and I'm the founder of Alzheimer Speaks. My mom lived with dementia for 30 years. And during that process, our family felt so isolated, and we just we didn't know where to go. We we didn't have resources. We no one talked about this topic, and it was it was really a difficult time. And so, in 2009, I decided to create Alzheimer Speaks with the objective to raise everyone's voice. So, those living with dementia, families struggling, trying to manage through this journey, as well as business professionals, um, authors, singers, songwriters, movie directors, advocates. Um, researchers, all of us. It takes all of us to shift our dementia care culture. And so that's really what we're what we're all about and, and why we're here today. We just think it's important to have a general conversation. And so on Alzheimer Speaks Radio, we're just true talk radio. We all talk with passion and from the heart and what we've been through, what we've experienced, and how we can share our experiences and our tools and products to improve hopefully your lives. As I always do, I so appreciate our audience because you see, you guys have have changed um, our, our projection in the world here. It has been your likes, your clicks, and your shares that have really propelled us into um, this atmosphere I didn't even know existed. People listen to us around the world and they want to hear what you have to say. So know that you could be our next guest and please share, um, like, push out these videos and audios so that people can get the information that they need. Everybody in our sphere is is pretty much dealing with this at some level in their life. It's pretty rare when someone hasn't been touched. And and so know that you are are making a big impact. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and introduce our guest today. I have Kathy Smith with us, and she is the founder of Senior Resource Hub. She became a caregiver for several of her family members. And her compassion for seniors and caregivers and just the whole understanding of the key challenges that that face them all, including long-term care and living decisions, made her kind of that go-to person for her family and friends all seeking advice in this area. Because most of us are going to be hit with uh, being a caregiver, a care partner, a carer, a care companion, whatever you want to call us. And and I, I too was that with my family, so I can totally relate to that. Kathy not only became an expert in the challenges, but she also discovered her passion to find ways to really help others, uh, to stop reinventing the wheel and learn to make the best care decisions and living decisions for seniors and and their caregivers. So um, welcome, Kathy. How are you doing today? I'm really doing well, thank you. And thank you for that nice introduction. Well, I'm, I'm excited to have you here with us today. And one of the questions I always ask everybody, just to give a background to our audience is, have you been touched by dementia within your own family or friends? Yes, in fact, my mother had uh, vascular dementia for about 17 years. And uh, that, you know, my dad took care of her uh, as the best he could for a long time, but it took quite a toll on his health as well, uh, being a caregiver. Well, thank you for sharing that. That just gives everybody a, a little more insight into you. What, what were your motivations, your true motivations to start the Seniors Resource Hub? Well, um, I took care of, like you said, several family members, mainly my uh, one aunt and both of my parents. 
And as my, my dad was really a very good planner as far as preparing for retirement, financially, legally, and, and medically. And, you know, as part of that process, they asked that would be power of attorney for he and my mother. And I was like, well, sure. But I had no idea what, well, sure meant, you know, it was like, you know, you, you have the best intentions and you want to help, but you really are totally uneducated as a first time caregiver. And so, you know, we, we went along, um, you know, like I said, my mother first started when she was 75 with dementia and it was, it really became apparent after she had a fall and fractured her neck. And so there were, were, you know, a lot of things, you know, physically to take care of. She was in a halo and things like that. And, and we went through that and we could see that, you know, the dementia was really creeping in on her. And then my dad's sister was several years older than he and, and they were like, you know, she really is needing help too. Um, would you sign up to be power of attorney for her? Yes. And I mean, by then we just got the ink dry on the paper and she was in the hospital with a heart attack. And so we were hitting the ground running. And so the process went, okay, she was in the hospital for a few days and then suggested that she go to rehab. And I was like, okay. And they placed a piece of paper in front of me and said, you know, pick where you want her to go. And I was like, well, you know, I'm going to be a little bit more diligent than that. And I'd really like to go out and visit some of these places and, and make a good decision. And they were like, well, that's fine, but you don't have a lot of time. So I packed up and went to some different facilities that I knew about and uh, went in and, and took the tour. But, you know, I found out quickly, I didn't know what I didn't know. And so it was a real estate type conversation about talking about the window coverings and the carpets and the renovations that had been done. But they didn't really focus the conversation on care. And, but, I, you know, I, I was totally unaware of that. And so I was like, okay, made a decision, turned out probably wasn't the best decision, managed the problems on the back end. Then it was time to move her to assisted living. She couldn't go back home again. Did this process over again, made an uneducated decision, not the best decision managed problems on the back end. And I repeated that process with my parents. And as I, you know, it was really many years deep into this and talking to other uh, adult children caregivers and lamenting about the issues, I, I, it dawned on me that, you know, everybody was in this boat together. We were all reinventing the wheel that our predecessors, as far as caregivers, had got, gained all this knowledge and information. And unfortunately, you know, typically the people that you're caring for pass away, you contain all that knowledge, and then the next person enters into to the world of caregiving and starts from scratch. And as I would talk about this with my friends and these other caregivers, they were like, you know, you really should start a consulting business, uh, you know, helping people make these decisions and make good decisions. And I thought to myself, well, yeah, that's great. But, you know, I wanted to think of a way to get to people to give them tools that were affordable that and we could reach a broad range of audience that could take advantage of this knowledge and not take months or years to accumulate what the rest of us had spent all that time doing. You know, it's really interesting. You mentioned kind of the, the pitch of the real estate, the curtains, the carpet, the decor, because I was in real estate and I worked a lot with the senior market for 25 years. And I saw that same thing. And builders actually were building for adult children for the flash and the comfort of what they would like versus necessarily the, the practicality and the needs of those that were living there. Mm -hmm. And and we fall into that trap because like you said, we don't know what we don't know. It looks good, it feels good, it should be good. And, mm -hmm. and yet it's not all the time. Right, right. And that, that's what spurred me then to say, okay, what could this tool be? And of course my dad was in the hospital one day and as I was getting ready to go visit him, it came to me to create comparison checklists so that we could identify the questions that were important. People could go out and do a side-by-side -side comparison of multiple providers and then make a good decision. Because you know, a lot of times I equate it to like, if you're going out and looking at a new home or a new car, after you've seen the second one, okay, which one had the tan leather interior or which one had the three bathrooms, you know, you're like, they all start to run together. So this way, it helps you keep organized and make, ask the good questions and make the best decision that you possibly can. That is so true. And I, I'm, a, I'm like the queen of checklists myself. I 
I just find them so valuable. But again, you don't know, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so having somebody develop that checklist for you to guide you in terms of those questions is really important. And I would love to see more communities talk about what their services are and, and not only what they are, but why. Exactly. You know, share the why because that's the educational key point. So can you kind of give us an, an overview of your comparison checklist app that you've developed and and how a caregiver can use that to, to best find the right uh, living situation for their loved one? Sure. First of all, we have four different um, checklist uh, based on the different types of providers. So we've got assisted living, we've got home care and home health care, we've got skilled nursing and rehab, as well as hospice and palliative care. They're all built uh, pretty much the same, whereas, you know, we've got, if you will, there's chapters and sub-chapters and then uh, questions. Uh, but so it, it helps then, then the service part of it is what changes, right? Home care versus skilled nursing or whatever. But so when you go in and you subscribe, and it's, it's a monthly subscription, if you need it longer, you can sign up for um, more months if, if you want. Uh, and if you only need it that one month, or if you're going to use it as a planning tool, uh, you set it up, customize the checklist based on what your person that's going to need this care is interested in, and then you can come back and access it at any time later and re uh, renew your subscription. But anyway, what you do is you go in and you can customize. The, the first thing that you can do is customize the checklist, and that's where you're going to get all your education. I don't expect anybody's ever going to ask all the questions in the checklist. You whittle it down to what's important to your situation, whether it's for your senior or yourself as far as helping you manage this. And once you have customized the checklist, again, as you said before, it's this checklist is very focused on care and service. So it's it's not about the draperies and the, you know, and like you said, it's it's great. Everybody wants our people to live in a in a wonderfully nice and a lovely facility uh, if that you know we need to have actual residential care but you want to make sure that the services uh, are, are tailored directly to you and as I said before my mom and dad both went into assisted living and as long as they were together in their apartment watching their own television everything was fine but my dad passed away and you know nobody was ever interested in activities before. They didn't want to go play bingo. They didn't want to do any of the group activities. That was fine. That made them happy. But once my dad was gone and my mother had the dementia issues, and not only did she had hearing problems and she had macular degeneration, well, you know, taking her to a group activity of coloring was not gonna, you know, she just then she, then all that did was get her out of the apartment and she sat there. So you know, then that became real important. Uh, some of the things too, like security, people think if, as long as I go into a, an assisted living or a rehab or a skilled nursing, that it's gonna be a very secure environment. Well, that's not necessarily the truth. You know, sometimes there's a receptionist at the desk, sometimes there's not, and people can just walk in and they're walking right into these people's homes. And so, you know, the, those are types of things you need to look at. Disaster plans, like last year when we saw all the hurricanes and again this year, but we haven't seen a lot of trouble with um, skilled nursing. But last year we saw people sitting in wheelchairs chest deep in water or it was so hot in Florida and there were no backup generators and, and the temperature was so high that there were fatalities. So, you know, those are other things that people need to look at as well as, What's the management look like? Is there a high rate of turnover? Do they have enough staff to take care of all the people that they have there? So, you know, looking at draperies and that are all well and good, but are they going to be able to service the needs of, of your loved ones when they're actually there? Or even at, at home care, right? You want to make sure that because there are so many uh, home health cares, uh, opening up because it's one of the, the most popular franchises right now. You want to make sure if somebody's supposed to be there at eight o'clock to give your mother or father a shower that they're there and they don't then call you 
at eight o'clock at work and say, hey, we're really sorry, but we can't get anybody to go there today to take care of them. And you're supposed to say, okay, well, I'll let my mom sit there in a wet depend all day, not showered, no breakfast. No, that's not going to happen. You have to go into crisis mode and take care of it. So making sure that you've got the best provider available is is what we're all about and, and focus people to get those questions asked and get the right answers well and i like that you've got a lot of questions and people can customize you know one of the the things that i see when i uh go around the country is that staff ratio who's actually included are you throwing in the maintenance and the secretary who really isn't directly involved with my person or do you have universal care where everyone really is a part of the care you know community how does that work and uh, but if you're putting in the accounting department and all of that that really um it can be misleading absolutely in, in terms of how care is happening and um do you have anything specific to memory care itself i know you had mentioned the assisted living the home health um, the skilled and then the hospice where does memory care fall in for you on we that? We have that in our um, assisted living. In that particular checklist, there is a, 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 an entire section on memory care. So if that's what you're interested in, then you can go in there, look at all the questions, and customize based on what your needs are there. Or again, if you don't have any interest in memory care, that's not your problem right now, uh, you can ignore that whole set of questions. But I wouldn't, I, I think I'd leave a few in because you never know what the future holds, right? And, and you should make sure that, uh, that, that they do have memory care, that they have, that it's secure. And, you know, there's so much new education and, and specific activities and things like that for people that have memory issues, that it's very good to find that out uh, before you make the selection because you don't want, to go to and, and and make a move and have people settled and then you've got an issue that you haven't addressed or made sure that you can grow into that facility because then you know the a lot of the conversation then is well it's going to be too hard on them with their memory issues or whatever it might be to move at this point we'll do better well okay you know maybe you make that I'll give you 30 days or whatever, but it's it's a good thing to have that all planned out in advance so that you know uh, that you could grow if you if you will that's uh, grow into a facility that would have maybe that option and and that level of care for you and that they do have people that are specially trained. It's not just anybody they've pulled in off the street that you know they they are aware of people with memory issues. And, and how to deal with them and, and how to help them uh, have a happy life. I totally life. agree. And another question I think that is really essential because, you know, as we age, we can have more difficulties and some are deemed behavioral issues mm -hmm. and not appropriate for a community. And how is that handled? Because some are just kicked to the curb and you've got like two days to, exactly. to get out of there or they're going to admit them to the hospital and you're not coming back and then you're in this whole panic mode. So how do they really deal with things like that? We don't always know that that's going to be an issue. I think that the better prepared you can be and take into all of the wide variety of circumstances that might happen is that you can, you know, participate in and ask those questions and have that conversation. You know, sometimes you might not answer all the questions, but once you've got that knowledge that you've gained from customizing the checklist, you can certainly engage in that conversation and make sure that, uh, you know, when you talk about additional needs that you might have in the future, how, how well prepared are they? You know, some continuous care facilities have, you, know, you can go from independent all the way up to uh, skilled nursing and rehab and things like that, but, uh, you know, it, it pays not to be short-sighted. It pays to plan and understand. And the other thing we have a lot of our clients use uh, the checklist to go back and look at their answers when they have care conferences and say, no, wait a minute, this is what we talked about when we agreed to come here. Now, hey, this is what we're getting and this is great, but maybe we're falling short a little bit here and you can raise that conversation and remind them of what you were promised. Yeah, that's that's really good. Notes help. <laughs> they, 
They definitely do. And even if there's staff turnover, it's still what was represented to you. Exactly. Right. And that's one good thing about our checklist is once you do have it all customized and you are actually out interviewing uh, the providers, you can take notes on the overall facility itself. Maybe you say, well, Kathy Smith recommended ABC assisted living. Okay, great. You know, that's how I got here. And, and but you can also at the question level, let's say if I said, uh, what's the turnover been like at the executive director or the executive position within the uh, facility or provider? Uh, you know, I can document uh, whether I believe, you know, it's, it's been excessive or it's been really good. We have a, a local facility here that they've had an outstanding reputation for years. And about six months ago, they changed their executive management, the person retired and there's somebody new. And there's a lot of uh, conversation about the, the quality has gone down. So I think it, you know, it's important to recognize that leadership in, it makes a huge impact on how the, the overall uh, delivery of, of the care is, is uh, actually prayed and, and delivered. Yeah, well, and, and who does the training? Is it, is it within the company? Is it outside? Is it, is it one method only? You know, especially when it comes to memory care, I think it's really important to have a toolkit and always to be adding to that because uh, things change. Things definitely change. Well, and, and if you have a high turnover in AIDS, it's, okay, here's our curriculum. That's all great, you know, get up to speed, but somebody needs to constantly be looking at what's new because there, there is so much great research and so many good things happening that need to be spread and shared so that they can uh, up the level of their game, if you will, and, and provide the best care and service. Mm -hmm. Nothing's worse than going someplace and you just see somebody sitting in a chair in the lobby, maybe with their head hanging down, and they're not engaged in anything. I, I just think that's horrible. So, you know, the, the more engagement, the better, the better it is for everybody. Yeah. Uh, what can you explain to our audience what makes your app different from some of the other services that are out there? Well, first of all, to my knowledge, there's not an app like this out there. But what would your alternative be? You might go to a, a consulting type of organization that, uh, you know, some of my friends wanted me to do it. And, and that's all well and good. And, and they have relationships with different um, facilities or providers. Um, and, you know, they, if they advertise the service is free, well, nothing's free, right? So they get a commission based on their relationship or partnership with, with the providers. So th right then and there, it says, okay, you as, as the consumer, not really in charge, somebody else's. And this, with having our app, you're in control of the conversation, you're in control of the decision, uh, and you're making it sure it, you know you need to be able to go someplace that that you can afford you take all of the considerations all of the different uh options into account make sure that it's it's exactly what you want it's not what somebody else wants or they have a relationship with and you know salespeople, and i am one they follow the money right so it's it you've got to make sure that it is uh, it's the best thing for your particular situation. So by being independent and in control, I think it makes for a much better process and a much better placement and life for the person that, that is making the change. Mm -hmm. And the caregiver. I mean, you know, nobody wants to manage problems. And when you look at the, the workforce now, 17% of the U.S. workforce are caregivers to seniors. That's huge. And when, and when you have that impact of, you know, you've got to go take care of problems or, you know, handle it on the phone or whatever, and you, you jeopardize your career and your livelihood by not being able to focus on what you're being paid to do. This really helps that as well. Great. Um, can you can you tell people in terms of the value of your app and, and what it provides to the senior? who you're looking for as well as as the caregiver themselves sure um you know caregiving 
after you're in it a while it and, and it depends on how how much is needed and, and, and the issues in that but it, it can be very stressful and when you're trying to get you know it's hard to make that decision of when you need help because so many people and certainly so many women try to do everything themselves you know we're heroes we can do it all and it it really you know it as it piles on it becomes more and more stressful and it, and it has a lot of times an impact on people's health so if you can go in and whether it's you're going to stay at home and you need some more help at home uh, and you get the right provider of home care, home health care, that's great. Um, if you need to have assisted living or skilled nursing or rehab, making that right decision. And certainly, um, you know, making a palliative care or a hospice decision is one of the most stressful times of your life. And you need to be able to make the best decision there as well. You know, it's it could be shorter term, you know, six months or less, but to make the best decision there is is really important as well. So reducing the anxiety, not taking such a toll on the health of the caregiver, uh, eliminating guilt is all important as well. But when you look at the caregiver, right, the most important part of the equation here is, or I'm sorry, the, the actual senior that needs the help, they're going to get the help that they need. They're going to get it tailored to what their specific needs are. Uh, we're going to look at a plan that says, okay, here's how we can grow. I mean, you, maybe you need home health care for the next year or two and maybe assisted living later, but you know you've got a plan here that you can grow and, and continue to take care of and get the kind of care, the medical care, the, the ancillary care, um, you know, and, and the other thing too, you know, like food is so important uh, to seniors. It's, you know, make sure that you look at the menu, ask to see the kitchen. Is it clean? Sit down and have a meal there. Don't, you know, if you're invited, that's fine, but kind of look at what the everyday kind of meals look like. So it's, it's making sure that that person who's worked their entire life to be prepared for retirement and saved a lot of money and they're going to spend that could be, you know, it's either going to be long-term insurance or their own money, but it's, it's a costly venture to be in and have um, senior care. Make sure you are getting the value for what you're paying for. And, and I think that that's tremendously important. Yeah, I I totally agree with you. And I like that idea of, you know, come in unannounced, go for a meal, because the food could be great, but if the atmosphere isn't, or if it's not a respectful thing, or are they flexible in the times your loved one can go down for a meal? Mm -hmm. um, how about, you know, showering and, and grooming and stuff? Does that have to be at a set time? All that, all that comes into play. Well, let's get let's get back to your app, and can we talk a little bit about the cost of your plans and, and how that would work? Because I know our audience would be interested in that. Sure, it's fifteen dollars a month for a subscription, uh, and that gives you access to. We have a database of eighty-two thousand different providers. So if you could go in and and you can either put a specific address in or a zip code and say you want to be within 5, 10, 25, or 50 miles of that particular location. And you can identify then, do you want assisted living? Do you want memory care? Do you want uh, skilled nursing with memory care or um, hospice and palliative care? So you can tell it what you want and it'll come back and give you a list of providers in your area. So then uh, again, you, we, we don't share your data as far as by name with somebody, but we are collecting a database that says, okay, for all the people that have gone out and looked at the Smith family assisted living, here's how, and when you do your comparison, you can see how everybody else rated or, or answered the question. So a lot of the questions are multiple choice. Uh, there are some that you have to do a little bit of uh, fill in the blank type thing, but you can go back then uh, and see how people answered and then you can also weight each one of your answers. So let's say you went in and you looked and asked about um, 
oh, let's say one of the questions is, you know, to observe uh, the nurses at the station. And if, when the call light goes off, do they go and silence the call button or do they silence it and go take care of the resident? Big difference. Big difference. And, uh, you know, one of the other things, so you can then say, okay, I observed that. I saw that they did a good job of answering the call button, silencing it, and then going and taking care of the resident. So I might give them between one to 10, I'll give them a nine on that. Uh, you might go in and ask to see the kitchen, and if the kitchen's dirty or the dining room's dirty, in between when you're coming down for your lunch or, or your dinner meal, you're like, okay, uh, that's not good. So you can then downgrade that. And say, I'll give you a two or a one on that. So that helps then that you tally up when you do your actual compare at the end of the process. You've gone out and you've talked to however many different facilities that you want, and it's it, there's no limit. You can as, as much time as you have. We have the capacity to uh, store your answers for you, and then the, because there's only so much real estate, right? On you can do it on a on you can do your visits. You can use any PC or web enabled, whether it's a laptop, which you don't want to take, carry around, but you might want to do your customization there. You can take a tablet or a smartphone out and it's one question at a time appears on the screen, you answer that. And then we kind of recommend that you go back to a computer or a larger tablet. And then there's real estate that you can lay out for facilities side by side and look at their answers. And then you can mix and match that. So you've got then your at the ones that have the highest point total. And then you can go down and look at your notes and, and look at what's most important to you and then make that decision. So with this, not only am I comparing my notes, but I also get the congregate survey information from everybody, which is mm -hmm. very interesting. How are communities feeling about being rated in such detail? Because a lot of times it's like, you know, give us the star from one to five and comment. Right. You've really broken it down, which I think is really nice. Well, and, and to tell you the truth, I think it scares a lot of people to be scrutinized like this. Uh, you know, it, there are a lot of questions, but, uh, you know, and there are very important questions, and it's not anything you want to gloss over. And I think, you know, I always say at the end of this process and at the end of when they're putting my tombstone up, I hope it says she made a difference because I, it, this can only help but elevate the quality of the care. When people understand that they are being looked at, it's not just a five minute tour and hey, yeah, we've got new carpet and we've got new window treatments. We just painted last week. Has nothing to do with the, the quality of the care. What we're looking at and what we're examining and what people are rating them on is the quality of the care and service that they provide a totally different conversation and uh, to to the credit of of a lot of uh different marketing organizations within these care providers is that they are looking at how can we train our marketing people to change the conversation they've got to i mean there's there's so many people in here and it in it, 10,000 people a day as you know turning 65 this market is is huge and we've got to do a better job of providing uh, high quality care. But, and I think, you know, companies can really use your information as a tool of where they're falling down. So instead of pushing it away or being upset that it's being done, going, oh, thank God, because we, we don't have the staff time to evaluate all this stuff all the time and mm -hmm. look from an outsider. You know, they have their secret shoppers and stuff, but this can really be a great tool. Is there a way to prevent, because I, I've heard this with, with other rating systems where companies have gone in and done kind of secret shoppers to boost up their rating. And it, it, I would think that would be hard to weed out. Yeah, it, it can be, but you know, they're, they're gonna have to pay every time to do that for every facility that they have. It's not like, like this, let's just call us Smith Family Assisted Living, we couldn't just go in and, and, you know, if we have a few hundred different locations, you know, that's going to be difficult to be able to do that. Um, if they would like to go in and put their, their evaluation in, uh, you know, one time, I mean, I can't really hardly, uh, but we do look at IP addresses and we do have, you know, our developer has a, a look at that so that if someone uh, has 
one subscription and they're out doing a lot of things on one IP address and that, you know, they can't possibly be in the same city, we'll, we'll be able to find that and uh, hopefully uh, stop that, uh, as well as people that, you know, if they went out and bought one subscription and shared it with seven or eight different people, as long as those different IP addresses keep popping up, we have an algorithm to, to check that. So we're not going to get every everyone, but you know, that's hopefully how we'll be able to, to keep that in check. Right. Is there a way, let's say, uh, let's say I'm a company and I get a bad rating on something. Is there a way for me to be able to post a comment or be notified of that so that um, maybe I want to write a comment. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. We are addressing this through blah, blah, blah. No, not really. Okay. Um, but um, one thing that we do have is the capability to go back after uh, someone has their, sub their subscription has uh, after the initial month, six months and 12 months post, if they did make a decision, uh, we can go back to them and ask, who did you decide to go with? And then rate them post activity, right? So everything when you're looking up front, right, things can look really kind of rosy, but the proof is in the pudding. And then we'll ask, you know, how, how are things, just an overall rating, not back to every question, but are things, were things as advertised? Are you happy with uh, what's happened? And then again, 12 months later, you know, ask that uh, and have that response to be able to, to share with people uh, at a later date. Or, you know, when you're, when you're just now coming into, you can kind of look and see, did they deliver as promised? So we do have that capability as well. Okay, great. Now you're a national company. You mentioned that you've got 82,000 providers, which is a, an awful lot of providers, but I would imagine that there's probably still pockets or holes. Um, of areas that, that maybe you don't have. If, if I'm out there and I, I'm looking in an area and you don't have anything at that time, is that something that'll be flagged for you and that you'll still try to assist me in, in finding those? Well, here's, here's what we do. Every six months, we update the database uh, so that you know there are uh, any new ones because I can tell you from where, where I live, right now here in North Cincinnati, uh, within five miles, there are four assisted livings under construction. So, you know, and that's what I know about here in my little world. So certainly, like we talked about before, I mean, this, this market is, is growing all the time. So when there are new facilities pop up that we don't know about, and, and maybe you do, there's an option when you're out looking at the database and if it doesn't show up that you can add in, say, you know, uh, the XYZ assisted living just opened on Cincinnati Pike. And you, if you provide the address, we will go back and vet that out and make sure that it is an actual up and running provider and add that into our database. So we do have a way of in between those six months of the, the update the actual update will buy the service, um, we can make sure that we're trying to be as up to date as we possibly can uh, to let people know the, what providers are out there. Okay, then another question I had is um, you, one of the things that I've seen in, in, in many, and they not, aren't necessarily apps, but magazines or different programs out there, um, people pay to be in, you know, on the list. And is that something, do you charge um, companies to be on, on your list at all? No, and thanks for asking the question because that, that's really important part of my business model. Uh, we don't have advertisers of, of providers like, you know, the home, the different, the four different areas where we, now we might have partnerships with some insurance companies and different things that don't have an impact on this. But we will, we, the plan is we will never let these providers advertise because then that, that seems to skew um, the fairness of it all. So uh, that's not our plan. That's not our business model. And again, that's kind of what makes us different to when we talked about uh, our business model versus competition. 
Well, that's a huge difference. And that's something that's always that, that has always bothered me. And even with Alzheimer's Speaks, you know, my goal was to even the playing field for all services instead of the guys with the big monies controlling it and um, getting to the top of the list just mm -hmm. because they've paid. Right. to be there <clears throat> because that can be really um, deceiving to the general public who wants to know everything that's out there. So kudos to you for, for developing a, a different model. Now, <clears throat> if someone is, is placed, I know that there are companies out there that, that get a big referral fee for placement. Is that is that part of your model as well? No, it's the $15 uh, per month subscription and that gives somebody all that knowledge and information. It gives them the capability to organize their answers, weight the answers, take notes, and that's it. Wow, that would, you know, it's kind of funny because I'm, I'm thinking about how much money some of these companies spend with some of these other models. They would be better off even giving out free subscriptions, covering the cost for somebody to go out. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing right now in terms Absolutely. of. Oh, and, and you know, and if I feel like, you know, it's it's almost like a poker game. But if I have enough confidence in my offering, that shouldn't be an issue, right? Is is I could give you a subscription and and challenge you to go out and find something that's a better offering than what, you know, that they have. So yeah. yeah. When I when I sold real estate, I would always encourage people to go ahead and call other people out. And my my real estate buds would say, "You're crazy. Why would you call on your competition?" And I said, "Because I am relationship based. Mm -hmm. And if I have a solid relationship with them, even even if my product doesn't fit them, and and it's it's not my product. No one's product's going to fit everybody's. And you're a fool to think it's going to." Um, in my personal opinion, <laughs> but you know, so if you if you go out knowing that you're about developing relationships, I have people who might not list with me, but who referred a ton of people to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because maybe they had a relative or whatever it was, or um, they ended up selling it themselves. Didn't make any difference, but our relationship was still there. And so I found when you help people and you're looking for authentically what's best for them, you just float to the top of their list because they trust you now. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I, I see where this could really, that communities could leverage this on their behalf mm -hmm. as a marketing tool and say, ask these questions, check this out because we're confident and you know what, if you find something you don't like, you tell us too, you know, don't just put it there, but tell us because we want to know. And make it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, very interesting. I, I, I'm always excited to hear how through somebody's experience, you know, and, and um, disarray through disease and aging, where they want to improve the system. And you've, you've really put a lot of thought and time into this. That's very, very evident. Um, what is the best way for people to get a hold of um, a hold of you and to be able to see exactly what the, your resources hub is? Okay, so probably the best thing is to go to our website and it's seniors, plural, S-E-N-I-O-R-S, resourcehub.com. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Uh, however, we got hacked over, you know, people got a lot of notifications. So we're in the process of rebuilding that. And uh, that should be up hopefully by the end of this week. And um, our office phone number is 937-866-7496. So anything that uh, you want, or we also have an email info at seniorsresourcehub.com and uh, any questions that you have we'd be glad to uh, get back and, and let you know uh, but again I'm glad you brought that up at the end we wanted to, to make this a very affordable tool that was easy to access for a, a good majority of people I have one other question that I just thought of what if I'm like you and taking care of multiple people um, can I do searches because maybe somebody needs assisted living and another one needs 
skilled care, would I be flagged or would I be able to, to utilize that? Good point. They're $15 per type of provider. So if you, let's just say you had hip replacement and maybe you wanted to look at home care and, and therapy that way, or as opposed to going to rehab, maybe you want to look at both of them before you make a decision. That would be $15 for each one. So for each different type of, of provider, it's, it's, so there's four different apps. Okay, and that uh, um, I think is very reasonable. And um, you've got all these promptings and support for people, which is which is absolutely wonderful. I just thought of one other thing. What about do you cover pets? Because sometimes people in assisted living um, want to know if they can have a, a pet in in their building. That is part of the the question, right? Mm -hmm. it, is part of the comparison checklist. One of the questions, or there are a few about that. And you know, one can you bring, like, whether it's a dog or a cat, right? Or maybe sometimes people are gravitate to a building that has their own house pet. So those types of questions, yes, we did we did cover that because that was so important. Uh, when my mom and dad were uh, in assisted living, well, and even when they were, uh, my dad did hospice at assisted living, but my mom was inpatient. Uh, I had at the time two labs and you know they were allowed to go every place you know that I went and it was delightful for the people to, to be able to interact with them even though and so then they kind of made an activity around them and uh, it was good one was he Malcolm he was very outgoing and he loved all the attention. Katie, she was not so sure. She was a little more shy. And whenever people would want to shake hands with her, she'd put her paw out and then they'd go to grab it and then she'd move it. So it was almost like a game she played with them. But yeah, so that's, you know, that's always been important for me. I, I've just seen how important pets are and how they can light up the world of, of the people uh, that, you know, may, maybe don't get to see a pet on an everyday and they, they miss that and they enjoy that and it brightens their day. So, uh, yeah, we did take that into account. Yep. Pets, kids, and music. I, they're all just big, big boosters. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Uh, it was really interesting to learn about your company seniors resource hub and i think it's a, sounds like an amazing app that can really help a lot of people through a very stressful and difficult time and by by gaining on somebody else's wisdom i mean it can just lighten the load tremendously thank you know you. um so so thank you for pulling this together in wrapping up, I just want to give a shout out to the Silver Dawn Training Institute, um, also known as uh, Dementia Raw. They are now rolling out a new online program for caregivers, which might be really interesting, and that might be a nice collaboration for the two of you as well. I just went to their um, certified dementia communication specialist training which was absolutely fantastic and they are just very practical and very fun and, and supportive and so i just uh, mentioned that in closing uh, so again everyone thanks so much for listening and please push this out i know you have friends and family in need of this app so thank you bud hi this is suzanne newman host of the Answers for Elders podcast and radio show. We are the North Star that guides you through the complicated journey of senior care with trusted experts in money, law, living solutions, and more. So join us on this station, your favorite podcast channel, or just go to AnswersForElders.com. Meet the Way Showers who will help your journey go a lot easier.